I had a kind of Huck Finnish upbringing where I wasn't supervised heavily, so I spent my days out in the woods and I would bang together tree forts and I would build dams and rivers and I spent a lot of my time reading. Mass market paperback was what storytelling was, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell those kinds of stories, stories that gripped you, stories that spiked your adrenaline, stories that made you turn the pages so swiftly they made a breeze on your face. That's how I sort of transcended my circumstances and found some greater sense of life. I'm Ben Percy, and I write novels, short stories, comics, screenplays, essays, articles, etc. The stories that I write, they don't hold back. I'm known as a scary writer. I have some pretty violent action set pieces here and there. The key to suspense is withholding information. You always want to have that carrot dangling tantalizingly out of reach. And once your reader gets to that carrot, there needs to be another one waiting on the horizon. So in that way, suspense operates like a turnstile of mysteries or a series of trap doors. So the previous owner of this house is a hobby photographer and this was his dark room. And I use it now for storage and for ideas. This is uh, my nightmare factory. Typically when I'm working on a, a novel or a screenplay, I'll think about it for a year before I actually begin to compose anything. So it starts off with just a note jotted uh, on a piece of paper and hung up on the wall. These range from short story ideas to comic book ideas uh, to novel ideas. Right here I've got a section on uh, the brain. Down here uh, a section on death. I have a section over here that's growing about art. And this right here, which has to do with the creation of an island that's going to be in a James Bond story. So you can just see like the, you know, things sort of take seed here and grow. This is my, this is my garden. To prove that I've always been demented, you know, here's a research paper from 1993 uh, called Werewolves. <laughs> why and how the legend began. I love that it has a table of contents, even though it's only five pages long. Um, and you can see the brilliant artwork in here. That's why I don't draw the comic books. <laughs> even in seventh grade, I was pretty lousy. Here are all the Green Arrow issues that have been published since I took over the series and this Rebirth issue. This is the number one issue. And to be part of that upswell of interest and that next generation of storytelling. Pretty special, pretty cool. I'm gonna get this framed. So your first audience when writing comics is the artist. Uh, you're trying to cultivate an atmosphere for them. Uh, to show them what you see while still giving them the permission to change it according to their own vision. And I'm talking about medium shots or wide shots or close-ups, giving different options for visuals. I can only take a story so far and then I need somebody else to come around and say, you put that in the wrong place or this subplot is irrelevant or this character is one-dimensional. Grey Wolf Press feels like family. They published my short story collection, Refresh, Refresh, in 2007, and I've grown up with them as a writer. And then they encouraged me at the same time to think about uh, this book of essays, uh, Thrill Me. We think that you should cultivate all of these poets and writers articles that you've been publishing over these past few years. I never set off to write a book of craft essays. And just over time, uh, over 10 years in fact, they became thrill me. Well, and some of it was sort of seeing a vision for what a book could be. You know, and that's what, that's what we do as publishers, that's what we do as editors. These weren't just individual small craft essays, but in fact, a, a whole 
vision for what contemporary fiction should be. So in a book like Thrill Me, you not only have practical commentary on how to craft a thrilling narrative, but you also have interwoven throughout how in your own career you learned how to do that. I feel like this book wouldn't exist without Grey Wolf. You know, they helped realize it. They helped manifest it in a way from first page to final draft. I spend so much of my time alone that it's great to be able to get out and take the stage and uh, see the effect of these yarns that I have woven on an audience. Please join me in welcoming our own 21st century Renaissance man, Benjamin Percy. This book is trying to cultivate the best of literary fiction and the best of genre fiction. Encouraging people to think about suspense and momentum. Encouraging people to think more critically about plot and how it can inform a story so that you're not merely cultivating pretty sentences and glowing metaphors, though those, of course, are important too. People always think about this. They think about the narrative gauntlet, and I break this down extensively. But the, you know, the thing to think about is that there is another arc on top of this, and that is the emotional arc, that every story is a transformation story. I had gone through all of these creative writing workshops, and I had earned these degrees, and I had lost touch with why I wanted to become a writer. And I recognized that it was possible that I could take all of these skills that I had cultivated from these creative writing workshops and apply them to the kind of thriller or horror story or comedy that I had loved so much. 39 rejections. Remember that the next time you're feeling low at the keyboard or thumbing open a letter addressed, dear writer, <laughs> and then pop the Rocky soundtrack into your stereo, tape your knuckles and wrists, ram your hands into gloves, step into that ring ready to last 12 rounds against Apollo Creed. Go the distance. Thanks. We're here at Hot Comics in New Hope, Minnesota for the signing of Teen Titans Rebirth number one. You know, sometimes I'll be handing in like seven issues a month and yeah. other times I'm handing in two issues a month. And I, I lose track of where I am. Are you just writing these two titles right now or? I'm taking over James Bond as well. Oh, okay. Comic fans are incredibly passionate. Like people just swarm out in response to it. And some of them love it and some of them hate it. It's addictive and energizing knowing that there are that many people out there hungry to read more about these characters. So you feel like you, you owe it to the fans to do that character justice and to put an incredible print on this story that might be going on for a hundred more years. Childhood dream come true, being able to write comics, I have to say. I'm, I feel lucky and excited every day when I sit down at the keyboard and get to dream this stuff up. I'm writing comics and I'm writing novels and I'm writing screenplays and I'm writing essays and I'm writing articles and I'm always trying to challenge myself and reinvent myself. So I guess you never know what you're gonna get from me except a thrilling ride.